Hello, Bame Farm fans. It is an incredibly magnificent day. See what's going on behind me? Yeah, buddy. Ready to test the bin out, ready to put the ear corner in for the first time. I got a couple wagon loads. Time to see if it works. I know the elevator turns, I know the corn flows out of the wagon. I'm sure gravity will work for it to fall in the hole. That's not what we're worried about. Um, the biggest thing will be how will the fall affect it? Because, yay, darkness. That's, uh, you know, let's see, these panels are just short of three feet, and there's one, two, three, four, five, essentially six, because this one, you know, the floor is halfway up. Uh, plus the pitch of the roof, a solid 20 feet to fall. We'll see how many lose their kernels. We gotta test one thing out first. So I got some new belts this morning, put them on. You remember the old e, uh, harvest handlers, the motor was set up maybe more in the middle, kind of for balance, and had really long belts. Well, this little guy right here is 38 inches. This is a 40 incher. And this motor came from the other harvest handler, which we never saw in a video, but I picked it up at a sale and it hadn't been used in ages. This is probably like an old washing machine motor. I, it says like Maytag on it or something. Um, so the belts are on, let's test it out. I opted out of using this one because this is really a fan motor and then spins twice the RPM of this one. And I decided I didn't need to launch the corn out to the driveway. I just need to get it out here nicely and this motor works. So hopefully it's got enough ponies to turn 30 foot of elevator instead of just 16. We're not fighting gravity, so we should have a pretty good shot here. So, everybody, let's take a look. We can see, let's grab a plug, try not to get electrocuted, and I should really make a switch out here or something instead of plugging it in, but this works for now. Yeah, there we go. That loudness is a wonderful sound. It means it works. I guess I have the belts tight enough. They mostly have enough clearance. I said mostly. We're going to polish the aluminum there a little bit. The belt is meant to come off at this angle on these elevators. That's a, a slight change. I may have to tighten this belt up. It looks a little slack and sloppy. But we got to kind of get them worn in, we'll say. We're gonna want earplugs in here. It's definitely not quiet, but that's just an elevator for you. And we'll take a look at this back side. We know it's turning because the front side is turning. It's a lot quieter over here. It all turns, we can get to that and grease it easy, and hopefully we never have to worry about changing and fixing stuff, but if we have to, we can. I still need to put a little like roof piece something to keep the water off that. But we can put corn in and enjoy all of our sweat work and close attempts at cutting off our finger with the flooring pieces and whatnot. So we have to stay tuned for when I gotta like get some air corn out of here. Well, time to put some corn in. We're pretty sure we can get it out. Okay, here goes nothing, hot dog. Okay, gotta remember to clutch. Got the clutch is behind us, pull the lever. And we're spinning. I'm not overly wild about some of the bends in the sheet metal. And that's not a great sound, whatever that is. But Brennan and I oiled the chains up a while ago. And we tried it out to make sure we turn, so here's some ears. Well, we thought there was gonna be some corn coming out. Once we get it going, there we go. <laughs> now we're just gonna make a big mess. A really big mess. Uh, that part.
part of the floor is going to be a real pain. That's annoying. That is not going well. Well, this is not a fun learning moment. Huh. We got to figure a way around that. That is very annoying. Well, the first few ears are about to fall in. Maybe that'll figure itself out here in a second. I can hear them falling. That's probably all the ears that made it up. And we're losing a few kernels. That ear broke in half. Eh, good bounce. I guess that'll be expected. Oh, we finally got moving, or we're breaking something. Huh, that didn't sound spectacular. Okay, quick inspection time. Yeah, we got this pile. Now there's an ear wedge. Oh, that's what half the problem is. There's ears wedged underneath the chain. And that probably means we need to go way up top and tighten the chain up a bunch. Hmm. Oh boy. Well, it's all in a day's adventure. I didn't grab the camera when I went up there, but all I had to do was take some tension off and use a screwdriver with a handy dandy. You know, they say anything's a hammer. Well, a scra screwdriver is a universal pry bar. I was able to turn it over by hand and get it popped back on the sprocket and all tightened up. So let's try this again. I got to get this cleaned out. If I, if I watch myself and keep the flow low, we might make it. We might. Well, we just missed the lesson in don't do what I do. And that is, I might have used my hands a little bit to uh, push the chain down to create some pressure to get the corn moving. Except now we have a very high chance of popping a sprocket off up there. So I'm kind of hanging tight by the tractor to stop this whole mess in case it goes haywire. Yeah, I think we just popped the sprocket up there. But we did get most of our mess cleaned out. And I may have to figure out, the problem is it's not that it's up, it's that it's down. Oh, ooh. Okay, well we're still, yeah, we popped up top. That's how I know. Well, I guess you guys can come along for this adventure. I haven't gone up this way yet, but I came down this way. I just always hope there's a good tread to stand on. Now we made one full turn because that was about in that spot <laughs> the last time I did this. Now, I might have made more than one full turn. Oh. Well, we'll see how it goes if I just keep the corn to a minimum. Yeah, we're cleaning out all the oil and stuff on this first bit of corn. Bombs away, right? That's all out of the way. I stopped it before the bar got up here, which is nice. Also makes me wonder if maybe that bar, that's a pretty straight one. That's not too bad, actually. Sometimes the bent ones will pull the chains closer together. That makes it easier to pop off. See, I just loosen it up here, take tension off, and we pry around with the screwdriver.
Okay, well, I got that straightened out-ish. You saw me get the hammer out. And we've got a pretty good flow going. I'm trying to meter it out. That's why I'm in the wagon, trying to keep it slow and gentle. You see that real yellow area way near the top? I was super worried. You can kind of see where there's some kernels gathered in that one spot right there. That's a low spot. And that's where the ears can get underneath the chain. So I hate putting out too many ears too quick because that could cause great problems. If I keep it light, we usually do okay. And the last couple of times I've had big floods, we've, done, we've survived, so that's good. That is good. Well, we've seen this before. I've moved quite a bit of ear corn. This wagon's almost done. But we might as well go in the bin and watch it fall in real quick. So we throw a little bit off center. We're starting to get a pile. And then you can hear the ting, ting, ting. That's the kernels probably breaking off and hitting the walls of the bin. Elevator is empty. Let's go get some more corn out. Well, this was the first half wagon load. I think it all fell in. Oop, gotta watch out for tripping over these. My little elevator protectors. Keep those in place. Hey, it's a start. Half a load down. A couple more to go. But next year, I'm getting an idea for about how many wagon loads you could fit in here. Yeah, light's kind of bright. Well, time to get another load and put it in. It's taken a hot second to get the load started because it was, we filled it from the back. Now it's starting to pick up. See how much of a mess we have to clean up down here. I, I kind of wish I had the little, the base and you know, I would make it wider and catch things better. Uh, however, that might not have gone well with the first wagon given varying heights. But I probably will put it back on. I just have to work on, you can see where that corn is piling up right there, the, the shelled stuff. I need to pull that flooring up. So far I've gotten pretty lucky today to keep stuff from getting underneath and you know jumping it off. That's gonna be a big mess. All the corn is along the back here. That's not gonna be fun to deal with. That'll be a lot of shoveling. This end is going pretty well. Hopefully we don't shell too much there through the beater. It seems to be doing okay. There's probably plenty of shell grain to begin with. But because of the clearance though, I gotta have the beater run and the corn won't go underneath it.
slowly building. Well, we won't have the whole floor covered, but we'll definitely be able to prove concept with this this year. I don't think they make grain spreaders rated for ear corn. Well, so far, so good. Haven't had any issues. There was one time I thought I was close. I'm really trying to watch the flow. And like I said, I can only stop the floor when I stop the beaters at that safety shut off over there. Like here, it's about to dump a bunch. And I just stopped it. Because I'm worried in that pile that maybe, and we'll watch as they go by, you know, if all the paddles stayed on the, on the floor of the elevator. So we might wear out the PTO clutches a little bit, shutting this on and off. So now we're getting to the big part of the pile. It typically keeps falling down evenly, usually, until it doesn't. Whee! It's like going up the hill at an amusement park. Little do they know, the giant fall awaiting them. Ah, the corn doesn't have feelings. It's dead, right? It's an inanimate object. So right now we're, I guess, proving concept. I won't have to ever put ear corn in a silage wagon again because, theoretically, I have this lovely bin to fill up. And I can go straight from the field into the bin and go back with those wagons instead of spending all winter with a bin or a barn uh, packed full of wagons and things in the way. I can unload the wagons and unfortunately uh, put them in their outdoor home and get other things like tractors and even more hay in the barn. Uh-oh, we're really trying to load it up right now. I'm being crazy or risky, I don't know which. So far the paddles look like they're staying down, but it's about to jump out. Now we're just outrunning the elevator. I'm not going to run it faster than an idle. I feel like speed will break these poor things faster. Speed means power. And I'd much, much rather stall the TC than wreck something like the chain on this guy. Well, let's come over and get this view again. I guess I've gone into full reckless abandon mode. Now, the pile has gotten a lot shorter. We're over probably halfway now. We're just getting that good long view up the hill. Yeah, there will be some shoveling. That's probably not good for that chain being covered in corn there, but it didn't pop off. Just imagine this, we'll get the uh, the drag elevator out to dump the gravity wagons into to then throw it up there so it's easier just to pull up with wagons in the fall. And even idling, this elevator is moving corn three to four times faster than it's coming out of the unit system. I mean, four rows can dump the corn, but you can only, you can only get it through the husking bed so fast. Oh, that's just making a big mess because I'm not over there watching it. And that'll be a little mess to clean up. Yeah, the pile's definitely getting smaller. I don't have to jump inside to kick the corn down like a gravity wagon, so that's nice, but there's definitely more shoveling. We can also see how much shelled corn we're collecting. This has a screen section up at the very top of the elevator. Now this is, and this wheelbarrow is from those two half wagon loads, and this had a good solid wagon load put in it. I have thought about running this stuff for the picker again, just to husk it better. Uh, but I gave up on that idea. Just trying to get it inside. The animals will eat it with or without shucks on, whatever animals those may be. I'd say it's holding kernels than most other corn I've seen. I've seen a handful of ads, not close to me, but just around Facebook and the piles half red so maybe I picked a good variety maybe or there's just that much uh, 
you know, moisture theoretically helps the corn hold kernels. And I'm running it through the silage wagon, which does absolutely nothing for kernel retention because that beater is just raking by it so many times. I have a good full wheelbarrow of grain. So hopefully this will be the last time. We still have that red silage wagon in the barn, but we load that in place. I can't get it out of there full. And we'll work out of that one slowly. Uh, but it's such a good feeling. And you know, moments like this make me think I don't have to always get this fixed. But I really should, because with how, with how heavy that was dumping the corn on, you know, it should have jumped the sprocket, but it didn't. And I gotta put this thing back in place. It suffered a small bit of damage in the storm. Gonna have to find some oh, fiberglass patch. I don't know where I could find one of these lids. And this thing blows off like once every five years. And that one, this last time it really took some damage. Time to climb up the staircase. I guess I'm not much heavier than when this thing's full of corn. It's less fun to do it holding an elevator. Oh, it's a little tippy now that I'm on it with this lid all the way up here. Oh, I'm really glad this thing has that support ring holding the uh, roof together up here. It gives me a good step so I don't slide off. Okay, lid. Sit for a hot second. Don't go no place. Need to remember to take these down with me. I left the tools up here to ward off, uh, you know, any evil chain jumping offs. Whee! Kind of move some of the schmutz. That'll probably blow away in the next windstorm. See, we got a there's a strap up here to keep it in place. I guess the wind just got blowing that hard. Take it away. Huh. It's not like it broke. It's still hooked. Yeah, it's still hooked over there. Okay. Everybody go back in place. Everybody find a place to sit. A good view. That's an okay view. I'm sure it has to be. I'll set it out there. Okay. Well, it's supposed to be locking spots because there's some like really long bolts sticking up. And I can see, you know, like anchor it down. Yeah. Oh, but those are thoroughly rusty. That's why we get to use our strap. Now, you're not allowed to go no place. Stay up here, would you? Hopefully, that doesn't cause us problems. Like it sits down on the fingers. We can look down there and see that there's clearance that all the weight is down there. I need to move this because it did blow off that way and it maybe came out of center. This poor strap is probably running out of stretch. Yeah. As tight as it's going to get, I guess. Nope. We tried. I wonder if the string was supposed to be doing something. Of course, there's ears over here and I shut the lid. Now we'll just toss them down on the ground. There goes another one, last one. I wonder if I did have it tied. You can see where there was two things, uh, maybe one thing. There's a line right there where the strap went before. I think it'll be okay. If not, I'll really need a lot of patchwork next time. 
Ooh, there's not enough weight down there and we're probably too high. Okay, well this has been a fun ear corn video in the spring. We are supremely excited for fall. Hopefully I don't fall down the elevator here. And we'll catch you guys later with more fun farming action.